Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited for this special Rise Up and Share Your Soul's Medicine transmission. I think this is episode 73 now. It's just so amazing. And every every few months, there's a special edition, right? And today being St. Bridget's Day, you know, Zoe and my dear friend Zoe and I have done this before. We did it a little differently this year here on Zoom, but it will also be shared on my YouTube channel and on Facebook. And so we're gathered here today, always, always this gathering is for you to connect with your beautiful soul, to remember that you have a unique soul's medicine and to help release whatever blocks, whatever resistance, whatever programming you might be holding that prevents you from truly sharing your medicine. And today on this special day, it's really about your sacred voice. We're going to be talking about your sacred voice, the divine technology that it is, and how you are here to share your medicine through your voice. And as I said earlier, I'm so delighted to be joined by my dear friend, Zoe Daly, who's streaming in from Dublin, Ireland. And she really is the, the spokesperson for Goddess Bridget, right? And, and she's going to share a little bit about this day. And just uh, throughout our gathering, we'll be sharing some of the messages that she has been receiving from Bridget, specifically around the power of your sacred voice. So we will have a meditation later, there will be an attunement, but so I'm not going to spend all this time right now doing a long meditation because we're going to step into that. And so before I bring Zoe on though, let's just take a few cleansing breaths together. And please know that Zoe and I, you know, before we began, we gathered together, we called on a circle of light and empowerment to surround each and every one of you to surround our collective group. And I just feel their love, their guidance, their gratitude that you said yes to this special invitation. And so I just ask your angels to help clear so like if you take a moment and just visualize your roots going deep into the earth, we're just setting the intention to release anything that could get in the way of you receiving the blessings and the teachings that are here for you. And you don't need to even know what that is, but just like, okay, if there's anything, 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 releasing it, of course, welcoming our overlighting mentor, Goddess Bridget. And so I feel her helping us release. And then at the same time, now call, turn on the magnet of your heart and call back to you your energy. So we want to be just very present here. Give yourself the gift of your presence. And so without further ado, I welcome Zoe to share a little bit with us about this special day, Zoe, and about um, Bridget and in bulk. Let me see. I think you can, can you, I'm going to ask to unmute. I think you can unmute. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yay. That's awesome. Cool. That's mm -hmm. great. Hi, Lisa. Thanks so much for having me. It's so good to be here with you and your gorgeous community. I love the fact that there is this international community and here interested in, in celebrating this specific one about St. Bridget, Goddess Bridget, like both names apply to her. And um, yeah, so it's such a joy to be here and, you know, kind of surprised to me always that other people have a know about Bridget and have a connection with her. Um, it it just it's it's really really lovely for for Irish people. Um, it's a very special day. It's become more special um since they the government made it a national bank holiday last year. So that that's huge, you know, because we've always had one for St Patrick, but never for St Bridget. Um, so so many people in Ireland, uh, you have this reverence and connection with Bridget, especially the women. And it really transcends all genres, all ages, all um, religious or non-religious followings. She has that power to really 
um, to to invite everybody into her presence and and people feel her even if they don't know quite the details of it um she she carries this almost almost silent presence but it's definitely becoming louder and louder and louder thank you zoe that's so beautiful and um you know i know we did and and one of the things that zoe and i talked about before we started was like okay we need to stay focused because we could just sit over here and talk for hours and hours about a lot of things but so we have a plan but we're also going to trust you know that it's being led right by a higher power and as you were sharing about saint bridget or goddess bridget i was so feeling i was really touched by what you said about her presence that almost it's like this silence silent presence except it's getting louder and and how beloved she is and i know we had that transmission where we were really bringing in guadalupe who is right here behind me our lady of guadalupe in mexico and Bridget, and I feel like there's so many connections, so many that we haven't even explored. So I just want to name Guadalupe, the sisterhood that there is here between all of us, this international community that we are. So thank you, Zoe. And I'm going to start some of the teachings, but absolutely, I know a lot of what you have to share today from Bridget's going to be connected to this. Actually, Zoe, if you can, can you share a little bit of the connection with Bridget and the throat? Just kind of like, so it's because that'll really start us off on this teaching about our sacred voice. Yeah, well, it's it's an interesting thing. Bridget is associated with so many different things. And generally, she's associated with, you know, agriculture and animals, community, kindness, compassion, a lot of things that the saints are associated with, but also with um with weaving. Um, she's associated with fire and water but she's also associated with the throat like in Ireland that's just a known thing um so I think it's really interesting when you invited this theme activating your sacred voice and I sat with Bridget in meditation I was like oh yeah of course that's what you're associated with the throat so so really I'm, I've just been learning so much more about that it's a simple thing that people would um maybe call on her you know for for literally uh, like an illness or a medical thing also the night before Bridget's day and Bridget's Eve is a special time where people gather they make Bridget's crosses like we did last night but also people leave out uh, a brat bridge which is a, a piece of cloth out mm -hmm. in the in, in in the in the nighttime because Bridget is supposed to awaken on the eve of in bulk which is also what this festival is called and she is um you know, she walks the land and the land awakens with her breath and she blesses all these breath bridges, which are left outside these cloths for Bridget. And people then use them throughout the year as blessing, as protection, often on their throat. Often it could be tied around their throat. So it's it's I feel like we're also uncovering this whole other teaching and, and um, aspect of, of Bridget here mm -hmm. in this discussion. Yeah, thank you so much, Zoe, because yeah, when we, you know, Zoe and I communicate a lot, but we're also seven hours apart, you know, she's, I'm in Mexico, she's in Ireland, so we often leave each other voice memos, that's kind of how we communicate, and when I was like, wait, should we do a, same, you know, a Bridget offering this year, and we're like, yeah, let's do it, and, and we didn't really talk about what the focus was going to be, I was just like, okay, I'm going to tune in. And that's what came forward, sacred voice. And then she was like, oh my gosh, yeah, Bridget is associated with that. So obviously there is such a divine synchronicity here. And so I want to talk about the voice, our soul's sacred voice as divine technology. And as we do that, and I do have a little paper here with just a little outline, because again, I, there's a couple of things that I wanted to make sure that we got into. And I'm going to ask you also if you feel safe, if you feel called to, to share in the chat, because even our writing can be voice, right? Can be the way to share your voice. And so when we talk about our sacred voice, it's very helpful to first talk about our ego's voice, right? That we have as humans here in the earth plane, you, and many of you who've taken my classes before have heard me speak of this many times. We have an ego structure, we just do. There's nothing to be ashamed of, it's nothing to judge. It's part of the courageous human journey we agreed to come here as divine beings and have an ego, right? And this ego structure 
operates from the, the faulty premise that we are separate from the divine, right? That, that, that starts the whole problem, right? And so the ego structure, when we use the voice, so this is one thing for us to understand, our voice can either be the microphone for our soul, right? Like the amplifier for our soul and for divine beings like Bridget, Mother Mary, Guadalupe, Kuan Yin, you know, they need our voice to share their messages or our voice can be the microphone for our ego structure, right? It can be the microphone that spreads fear, doubt, comparison, all of those things. And there's no judgment because again, we agreed to come here with an ego structure. And so we all do that. There are times that we all share, speak from our ego. So there's not, I am in no way saying, oh, I always speak for my soul. Absolutely not, right? But there's this commitment that we can make to say, oh, wait, I want to be the spokesperson. You know, I want to be the microphone for my soul and for whatever divine beings you're here to channel to be an oracle for. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but and so if you're here in this class, I know you already are. You're already sharing messages from your soul. But this gathering on this beautiful, powerful day of St. Bridget is really to remember the power of your voice to discern, to go within and ask the question, what aspect of my sacred voice is being activated in 2024? What truth am I here to share, right? So, so there's the teachings that we're sharing are just going to be like the little foundation. And of course, this is just an introduction. There's so much more that we can go into, but I'm giving you a slice here. Trust that whatever goes in, whatever your soul highlights is the teaching for you. And remember, you will get the replay so you can re-listen. So first thing I just want to share with the ego's voice. And this is something that came to me a few months ago. Some of you were in my creatrix temple, these teachings. And again, it's helpful just for you to, to like listen and see like, ooh, where, where do I use, like, where is that strong in me, that part of my ego's voice? Again, no judgment. This isn't like for you to beat yourself up. It's just to know like, oh, that's a wound that needs healing, right? So these are the ego's voice aspects, right? So there's rescuing. So rescuing can sound very lovely and beautiful, but when it comes from our ego structure, it comes from codependency, right? It comes from feeling that we need to save other people, right? We need to use our voice to convince someone of something, sometimes to believe in themselves more than they believe in themselves, right? And that feels very different when it comes from the ego than when it comes from our soul. So there's something about us identifying, do I use my voice in that way? And the answer is yes, we all have, right? Again, it's not, but is it like, oh, is that something that maybe as you hear that, you're like, oh, I used to do that a lot. I used to really use my voice a lot in that way, but I've healed it a lot, all right? So just notice or maybe you're like, oh my gosh, I totally am still in that. Again, there's no judgment. It's just like, okay, when we get to the attunement aspect, the healing aspect of that, then maybe that's going to be something that's healed, right? And the other way that our voice can be used is to judge, to judge others or ourselves. And I find for people who are attracted to my work, by far, by far, the biggest challenge is the self-judgment. Even if you don't say the words out loud, but if you're judging yourself with words internally, oh, I should have done that. I should be further ahead. Why can't I figure this out? This is so dumb. I should do this. That's that's a, that's the internal voice. And that is a voice that's coming from our ego structure because your soul would never, ever, ever, ever speak to you in that way. So perhaps for you, that is the aspect of your voice that you're like, oh my gosh, that's the, that's the voice that needs healing for me, right? That's the, I know I personally have done so much healing and that it's so much better than it used to be, but there's still these subtle ways that that internal voice can berate me and judge me and feel like, you know, what's wrong with you? You should be here. And so just notice if that's true for you. 
And the other two that I'll share quickly is our ego's voice can overspeak, right? Can can either kind of overspeak, overspeak, whether it's because you're trying to convince, because of nervousness, because of misalignment with our soul, and then can underspeak, right? Feel like stifled, like the words are just stuck in your throat. I know that was such a struggle for me, you know, it came from childhood trauma and experiences where, you know, that inner child inside of me just felt it wasn't safe to speak, like, or I had to speak very low, or I had to wait till I had permission to speak, right? And so as you hear those, if you want to share in the chat, feel free to share it. And like I said, we'll do a meditation, like which of those comes to you that you're like, oh, this aspect, right? This, whether it's judgment of others or yourself, right? Whether it's um, you know, that feeling of speaking too much, using too many words, over explaining, not speaking, right? Maybe it's feeling like, oh my gosh, the words just get stuck in my throat and I can't get them out. I just kind of notice. And let's just take actually a moment right now. We welcome beautiful Bridget with her illumination to put a spotlight on what aspect of that ego voice is coming up for healing for you. Is it, you know, that rescuing, convincing? Is it that judgment, that judgmental voice for yourself or for others? Is it over speaking, over explaining? Or is it under speaking, just not being able to get the words out? And whether you heard an answer in this moment or not, trust that it's in your heart and it will become clear at the right time. I'm going to check in with Zoe to see if she wants to add anything. And if you want to share in the chat what came up for you, like which one, if you got some insights, like that you're like, oh gosh, yeah. I know for me still was the self-judgment. That was for sure one that came up and it was like a, a subtlety, but this like this voice inside that can still be very like managerial, like kind of like in a berating way, you know? So that's what came for me. Jill, thank you for sharing that, judging yourself. Yeah. Zoe, want to check in with you? Yeah. yeah, for me, it, um, when we just did that, it's, it's, it's often uh, over speaking out of nervousness mm -hmm. or that's been something I've been working on for so long. And I feel still like I'm, have that urge to fill a gap you know or um yeah it's really a codependent thing often to make other people feel better um but it really takes me out of myself takes me out of my soul's presence it 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 you know I've found really I've been working a lot on and Bridget said it to me sometimes speaking less he travels further you know and enables you to actually receive and listen rather than off like a train <laughs> yeah. thank you so much Zoe that's so beautiful it so goes with what we'll go into next but I want to share with that like I I love that you said about over speaking that can come from codependency right like wanting to fill in the space and I remember when I was a teacher I used to teach seventh grade you know that's around 13 14 year olds and one of the things when you're learning how to be a teacher is wait time, right? Is that you You ask a question. So you have a room full of 30 teenagers, right? And you ask a question and nobody says anything. And as a new teacher, you just panic. You're like, oh my gosh, like somebody say something, right? So then you just, like you said, it's just like a train <laughs> coming out of your mouth. You're just like, rrr, 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 right? And I remember having like my teacher mentors that would be like, that was a teaching. Like you need to just pause and be with the discomfort, right? Be with with the discomfort of like, oh my gosh, is a teenager, is the kid now going to misbehave or is anybody going to say anything or, you know, just like be, and then with those sensitive teenagers that are like, oh my gosh, she's probably feeling bad. Nobody's answering. Right. And it's just like, just being with all that. So now I realize like, oh my gosh, that was such priestess training for me that who would have known. Right. But that, cause that was incredibly difficult. So anyway, thank you, Zoe. If, you know, some of you listening might 
might connect with that. Or it might be the opposite for you, right? For you, it might be like, I just, and that was an issue for me as well, is that under speaking sometimes in group settings, right? That it would be like, okay, I'm going to wait till somebody stops talking and then I'll talk. Like, no, okay, wait, I don't want to cut anybody off. So I'm just going to wait. And then like, I would just do that over and over. And then I'd never say anything, right? And it was like, um, but it was, again, it was coming from wounding inside of me. So thank you. And thank you, Jill, for, for sharing about, yeah, judging yourself. Yeah. And so I want to share before continuing this little statue I have of Bridget, which I love, you know, I love this statue of her. And the reason, you know, I'm sharing is she's holding this flame. And when I was tuning in and preparing for the attunement and meditation we'll be doing, she just kept showing me this flame. And she's like, okay, we're going to be putting this flame, you know, not an actual flame, an etheric sacred flame into our, in our throat chakra to help clear those wounds that create this, these, these um, ego voice patterns that we might have. Right. And it's like, and so just, I already feel, even as we're talking on my, the back of my neck feels so warm and I feel like there's already this opening that's happening. Right. And I found this beautiful pendant in this beautiful store here in Mexico. And I was like, you know, that this is also part of the transmission, right. It's like, like this petal, these flower at our throat. Right. And it's like, we're opening those petals more and more and more like amplifying the speaker. Right. And see, so I'm reading Deborah, working on ways to allow myself to feel anger and then find a way to communicate what I need without being driven by that anger. Deborah, yes. And then I see the connection of overspeaking as a way of talking around anger. Oh, Deborah, that's so wise. Yes. And that's so, so let's talk. This is really good to talk about our soul's voice because I think this is really important what you just shared, Deborah. So the four aspects of our sacred voice, right? Of the teachings that came through for me with this is, so we talked about the ego, right? The ego could have the microphone or our soul could have the microphone or our soul can be the microphone for, um, our voice can be the microphone for our soul, right? And so there's the creatrix, right? The, our voice that's creating our manifestations, right? Creating what we want, speaking what we want, whether it's, you know, a business that you're building, whether it's relationships, you know, a healed relationship, whether it's a healed body, whether it's financial prosperity, whether it's a healing center, a book, whatever it is, right? It's like we use our words as spells. That's what a spell is. We're spelling out with our words what we're creating, right? So there's that. And our ego can miscreate, right? We can also miscreate. We can use our words to create things we don't want, right? And so there's that. There's also our voice as truth tellers. I would say this goes, Deborah, with what you were saying. And what I wrote here is brings clarity, truth, innocence. I thought that was so interesting. Clarity, truth, and innocence to illusion, confusion, and lies, I like really take that in. I found that to be so powerful. It's that our voice can bring clarity, truth, and innocence, right? That that child within us that knows the truth, right? That she she knows like, this is not true, right? Like our child inside knows like, wait, this doesn't make sense. What's going on, right? And so that truth, clarity, and innocence, and where does it bring it? It brings it to illusion, confusion, and lies, Right. And sometimes in in saying that truth, it can be hard truths for people to hear like that. But when we're speaking from our soul, there's no convincing. Right. There isn't a judgment. There isn't. Um, and but but I want to be clear, this is like spiritual maturity, like we're all learning how to do this. So you know, it's going to be messy at times, right? There's going to be times where you're like, okay, I'm going to speak from my soul and just share this message. And then parts of us get activated and then they get angry. And then it's like, okay, that went out the window, right? But, but your soul was still there, right? And so this is a practice. This is a process, like really being compassionate with ourselves. And it's like compassionate and disciplined, like both those, right? Those are really important. So truth teller, and I'm going to read some of these comments, silent witness. And this goes back to what Zoe said, which I love. It was like, 
because when I heard that, I was like, oh, our sacred voice. And this is what I, when I was writing this came, it's like radiates compassion and truth without saying a word. Think about that. Radiates compassion and truth without saying a word. So there are times where, like you said, silence can go way further, but that's different than silence because I'm scared to speak. Oh my gosh, nobody's going to hear me. That's different. That's a trauma response. This is knowing, okay, right now my soul is saying, just be in silence, that sacred silence and radiate that compassion and radiate that truth. That is one of the most powerful things that we can do. Right? And, and we can tell the difference when we're doing that or when we're like, again, stifling ourselves or in fear about sharing. So I want to read some of these here. Sophia saying, I became aware in withholding my voice because I don't want my ego to come through out of my control. Oh, thank you, Sophia, for sharing that. Yeah, I think that that is so insightful that we can. And sometimes sometimes that's part of the journey. Sometimes we we decide that, you know what? If I spoke right now, it would come from my ego mind and and this would not ultimately wouldn't help the situation, right? And so there are times where we, that is absolutely the right step to do. I mean, oh my gosh, I have, I went through years in, in one specific situation that comes to mind where I was surrounded by a lot of illusion and lies and slander and Although, yes, there were times where I had to speak my truth and be very clear. There were other times where I just, I had to be in silence, not from a, a place of like, I'm not permitted to speak, but just knowing like right now, that's what is going to take me further. And so, but here, Sophia, I would just guide you to check in with that part of you that says, I have to withhold my voice because I don't want my ego to come through out of my control. And so I would, when we get it with Bridget, and I feel like Bridget's already bringing healing to you, but when we go into that journey with Bridget, you know, asking her for, for this healing around that, right? To just kind of clean that out. And Deborah, uh, to speak with innocence is to speak without blame of others herself. Yes, that holy innocence that we all have. Yeah, that we can say a truth without without judgment, right? That, that's such a high level skill to be able to speak a truth that somebody doesn't want to hear, but it's coming from, but there's no judgment. I, for me, what always helps me is to tune into an ascended master. For me, often it's mother Mary. Like I think like, okay, when mother Mary walked the earth, <laughs> you know, she wasn't just this meek person that always smiled. Like, she was a priestess. She was powerful. And there were times where she had to say some truths that people didn't want to hear. And I know she wasn't like, and you better hear me because if not, you're, you know, she wasn't doing that, right? She, she was able to share it and still have this compassion. And like, so I tune into her. For me, it's like I tune into her like, okay, how would Mother Mary speak this? Like, and for you, it might not be Mother Mary. It might be another divine being, right? But that helps me. And Sophia saying, and that the clarity, my voice will isolate me. Uh, Sophia, thank you for sharing all that. It's like, that's what we're here to clear. That's what we're here all to heal. And so I want to just check in with you, Zoe, before I just share the last aspect of our sacred voice, but just want to see if there's anything you want to add or share. Yeah, I mean... No, I think just like everything that everybody is is saying that we all experience is like just acknowledge that we we have been so there has been so much trauma around our voice for many of us here, all of us here or who are on this path. I would say that's my throat check and my voice is is my biggest area of healing mm -hmm. that uh, sometimes <laughs> seems like it's never ending you know, it's definitely the, the thing I have to work on the most. And and th that is because we have been, this has been a targeting, you know, we have like had so much deliberate, um, you know, targeting and trauma around this, that it's, 
you know, just to acknowledge that, you know, for for ourselves that we're, you know, we're we're also brave to be here healing our voice and using it at the same time. And those two things, one doesn't come before the other. It doesn't mean we have to heal it before we use it. They 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 happen together and that's that's feels messy and vulnerable. But that's definitely the thing. I'll talk about it after what Bridget shared with me, but that the, our voice is this constant invitation to self-mastery, that this um, healing journey with our own voices is uh, a constant um, invitation to for self-healing, really, because our voices are constantly showing us the places and spaces that need healing. Oh, thank you so much, Zoe. And I love that you said you know, reminded us here, spoke into here how, well, a few things, but one is that it's been targeted, right? Our voice, especially for women, especially for spiritual women, for priestesses, medicine women, shamans across lifetimes, literally there has been a campaign to stifle the divine feminine voice. So there is this very real fear of using it there is this very real you know trauma response in opening our voice so it is so courageous to be here and then I love what you said too that reminder that it's not one before the other we heal it simultaneously especially in these times we're not anymore if we ever were in the times where like, okay, I'm going to take a year to heal my throat chakra. And then next year I will share my teachings. That's not how it is anymore. It's like we heal as we use it, right? It like that. And that's the vulnerability. That's the, the courage. That's the vulnerability of doing this work, right? It's that. And, and of course, we're to be gentle with ourselves and compassionate with ourselves. And it's a process but absolutely we're using it and we're healing it. We're healing it and we're using it. The more we use it, the more we heal it, the more we heal it, the more we can use it, right? So it's like a simultaneous thing. And so thank you for bringing that, Zoe. I wanna see, Heather's saying, I find myself judging my children and really it's me judging myself. Oh my gosh, yes, Heather. And I'm not saying yes, like to you, I'm saying yes to, you know, like I totally relate. Yes, whether it's our children or anyone else, right? It's like, I remember in my training, um, in the psychotherapy training that I took, it was like, you know, if you spot it, you got it, right? It was like that, oh, it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, whenever. And, and to, again, to have compassion for ourselves, not to beat ourselves up, why am I judging others? But more like, okay, wait, what part of me needs some love right now? What part of me, before dealing with anybody else, like what part of me is needing that? How can I use my sacred voice to heal me first and then decide what I want to say about others or to others. So thank you, Heather, for sharing that. Yes. And so the last one, so the four aspects, I said creatrix, right? Speaking your creations into form. There's truth teller, right? Remember in the meditation, you're going to hear like a which of, which of those petals, right? Which of those is being really activated for you, right? There's silent witness. And then the last one is blesser. Right, blesser. I think that I don't know that that's a word actually. I might have made that up, but but the spell check kept correcting it for me. So I was like, I'm saying it's a word, blesser. So what what came to me as I was really tuning into this, like, okay, what does that mean? What what's a blessing? And what I heard was a declaration of divine love that comes through us, not from us. And so what that what does that mean? It comes through us, not from us being not from our ego, not from our personality self, but through through us, like from our soul, from the divine, right? It's this blessing that gets uttered out of us. And we either do the blessing out loud or we might internally do it and not even recognize it. But there is this amplification of this technology because the world needs blessing. People need to be blessed like that declaration, right? What's a declaration of divine love? It's like, you are loved. And that that might not be the words you use. That might not be the words that come from you, right? That are uttered out of you or either in silence or verbally. But that is what we're, you know, that is part of our path. That is part of how our soul uses us as, uses our voice. 
and the divine beings like Bridget, like Mother Mary, like Kuan Yin, like Green Tara, like Ascended Master Jesus or Baba Ji or whomever chooses you to be their spokesperson. And so Jill is saying, oh, no, Sophia is saying, what was the third pillar? Silent witness. So it was creatrix, truth teller, and silent witness. Whoa, there's like balloons. I've <laughs> never seen that. <laughs> that was like very do. cool. Wait, was that you, Zoe? No, I didn't do a thing. But oh, it's so huge. Oh, I, love, I it. love it. <laughs> I've never <laughs> experienced that. Okay. So I was just like, I literally thought they were in my room. I was like, wait, did I have balloons? <laughs> Okay, so um, creatrix, truth teller, and I realized I should have given you these, Zoe, because then you could have put them in the chat. We'll know for next time. Creatrix, truth teller, silent witness, and now blesser, right? Those are the four, right? It's like that, and and I'll share it again in the meditation so you can hear it like, oh, and, and actually next week, I'm going to do a free five-day training, like a soul jumpstart. And I don't know if I'll be, if that will be in the teachings. I might be able to weave that into one of the days. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little more at the end. Okay, so let me see. Some people shared some things. Jill saying silent witness. Yes, that's so powerful. No, oh, yes. Yeah, thank you, Jill. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna um, actually... Zoe, I think right now I'll have you share some of Bridget's teachings, some of the channeled messages, and I'll talk a little bit about channeling because I know that word can be really intense. And then we'll go into the meditation and into the attunement. Okay, so I, channeling messages, being an oracle, I know that can sound so like, oh, like amazing. And, and this is what I want to say. Yes, it is very sacred. It, I'm not trying to minimize that. But we need to normalize it. We are all channels. We are all oracles. First of all, you're a channel and oracle for your own soul. That's the most important thing. Because remember, nobody else has your soul's medicine. So you've got specific messages that only you can share in the way you're meant to share. And then we have all these divine beings that love humanity, that want to help humanity, that are helping humanity, but they also understand that they need human voices to share their messages sometimes. So all it is, is having a conversation, right? Being, uh, answering the call to have this conversation with these divine beings. Sometimes some of these, especially with the Ascended Masters, you might've had a lifetime where you, you were their student or you were their peer. I mean, I, I definitely feel like many of you here probably feel that I was definitely in that is seen lifetime right with Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary and Jesus and I don't mean like oh I'm so special I did this like so many of us did it's not just me right and so to me having a conversation with Mother Mary or with Ascended Master Jesus or Mary Magdalene it was like of course of course they want to talk to me but not just me they want to talk to you so when I bring up you know Zoe to share this about her her channel messages from Bridget very sacred very beautiful and also like we all, we all are being called to do that, right? So, okay, Zoe, go ahead. Yeah, I love what you say. It's so true. And we all have our own connection to our specific lineage and the enlightened beings in our lineage, you know, which all ultimately the enlightened ones are saying the same truths, the same teachings, no matter whether it's down the Mayan lines or the, you know, the Essene or the Celtic ones that I'm connected to and 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 even then we all have the opportunity to communicate um you know the same opportunity for me when i meditate with my celtic guides it's 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 really just feels like a conversation you know i i never feel like oh, i'm channeling <laughs> like you know it doesn't feel that special it just feels like yeah it's 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 a clear different um signature you know, and because I'm used to working with that signature in a, in a conversational way, and they each have different signatures, it it just it's just like a, a gentle conversation. That's what it feels like to me. Often they're mirroring things I'm learning, you know. So I'm up leveling in my own work, and will you know have a kind of conversation around that. 
So, um, so this was a really great opportunity when I sat with Bridget in my meditations since you brought this theme, just to really learn more about this this voice um, aspect that she's connected to, and it just goes back to that that um, continuous message she's sharing, which is um, our voice is a sacred tool. We have this sacred tool that we have access to all the time. It's so funny because we use it all the time. We can take it for granted and we often use it unconsciously. You know, it's like that train I spoke about earlier. Often for me, it just wake up in the morning and you're, you're not really conscious. I'm conscious of my inner world, but sometimes we can be totally unconscious of our conversations or get pulled into a conversation where we're, our words are almost reacting. But really, it's been a practice for me um, to really bring consciousness to my words, to bring conscious attention. And she was really saying our words convey the truth of our inner world. You know, so any of us on this path of growth it's it's such a great teacher our words are our own teacher our voice is our teacher and the moment we can bring conscious awareness to it we can really become aware that our 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 words are um you know we could be using them to manifest positive outcomes we could be using them to bless we could be using them in these very very high um, highest intended ways for our own good and the good of others or when we bring conscious attention to them and this can where we need to be compassionate and not judging ourselves just just constantly weaving back that attention she was showing me into how we use our words we can often witness that we are our words are betraying what we really want we could be working on abundance consciousness and all the words coming out of us are actually about lack, you know? So she's really inviting me to, 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 to know that we have this opportunity at every moment, because at every moment we can use our voice to ourselves or in conversation and becoming witness to it, bringing conscious awareness to it. Is, is an opportunity in every present moment to either witness wounding that's coming out through our voice or our ego structure, like you said, or to consciously direct reality, consciously use our words to manifest what we want to manifest or to send that blessing. That there's just this real um, invitation for self-mastery at every moment I was just blown away by that. I was like, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to go to a class. I need to go to meditate to learn this thing. She was like, you have the opportunity to learn at every sentence about yourself and to change it in that moment. And for me, as I said before, with my voice, that involves slowing down a lot and becoming truly present to, to the words I'm choosing to say especially in conversation when it's suddenly a question's asked and I'm like, zip, we're off with my children. I'm like, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, totally unconscious. And since I've been practicing that, I'm noticing how unconscious I am the majority of the time <laughs> with my voice. Mm -hmm. So it's a practice, right? Yeah. Um, so another thing I'll just like... um, quickly share is how our voice is really linked to our, our, our sacral chakra as these vehicles of creation. I often, when I put my hand here, I put my hand on my sacral. And as we said at the beginning, Bridget is associated with this time of year. This is her celebration, which is a Celtic festival called Imbolc, which means, translates as in the belly, which refers to a time in agriculture where all the sheep, the sheep on our farm, they're all pregnant with their lambs. So there's this promise, this potential, this, as she called the sacral, our cauldron of creation, this opportunity, she said, that starts here before it comes out in our voice. We have this opportunity to pause like a pregnant pause before we birth out through our voice, a creation. Yeah, thank you so much. I feel like 
There was so much you said, and it was like we were receiving not just the words, but the the resonance behind the words. And what I wrote, I, I love earlier when you said that, that oftentimes our words can betray what we really want. You know, like we're saying we want abundance, but we're speaking lack and scarcity, or we're, we're, we could say we want, you know, unity, consciousness and love, and we're speaking judgment, you know, and it's like, and again, not judging ourselves for that, but that that every moment mastery, right, of tuning in, of pausing. And I love like the pregnant pause, which is such a beautiful way to say it. So perfect. Um, and when you were talking, I really felt Joan of Arc step in. You know, it was just like when there was something, I don't even remember what point what you said, but I just, I just saw her with her banner, right? Her banner of truth and like her banner, you know, holding her, her message and that like, banner in one hand or however, banner in one hand sword in the other however it was banner in one hand and sword in the other it's like it's like that sort of like no this is this is my truth yeah sometimes I waver and I come over here but I'm coming back like I just really felt that and so this is uh perfect as we step into our meditation our inner journey because I feel like that warmed us all up to open up and receive and um Jill saying, thank you, Zoe, love what you shared. And Sophia, yes, my most powerful practice for voices are automatic writing to befriend all my unconscious voices. Yes, I would call it to befriend all my parts, right? That's what I do, absolutely. And, and speaking of writing, if you would like to have a journal or pen or something to write with for during the inner journey, because there will be some questions that I will be guiding you to ask your soul. Of course, this is recorded. You can always go back and you don't need to write anything, but more and more, I find that that helps me grounded. So if you want to have that nearby, feel free to do that. And feeling again, you know, just seeing this beautiful image of Bridget. There's so many, but here's the cauldron you were talking about. <laughs> so we, and, um, her beautiful flame, just that she's going to be bringing to us. Right. And I really feel like these books are not like, oh, all these books you need to go study. I feel it's like your books. It's like several things. It's not that you necessarily have to write a book, although I know some of you might be writing a book, but it's like your wisdom, right? Your knowing and also your Akashic records, <laughs> right? It's like the book of your soul, right? The book of your life. So, all right. So let us, I'm going to drink a little water. I want you to know I have this candle lit for all of us. Look at this. Throat chakra. My One of my sons surprised me for Christmas. He sent me these three chakra candles. I was like shocked. I was like, what? And the ones he chose, I just found it so meaningful. I know he wasn't thinking like, which chakra should I? I mean, he doesn't know that much about chakras. But I just was like, oh my gosh, how divine that he's one of the ones he sent was throat. So I have it lit up. I'm going to burn a little bit of incense. And uh, I'm going to try really to end on time, but this might go over. So I apologize ahead of time. You know what? Let me just say it's going to, I'm not saying the meditation necessarily will go over, but I'm going to have a closing after. So it's not like we're going to meditate. I'm like, okay, bye. You know, so, but if you need to get off at that point, we will, you know, you'll get the replay. So I'm just burning some copal. This is a, you know, the Mayans use this a lot in ceremony. So we're opening the ceremonial space, I call on your enlightened ancestors. And what I'm being guided to invite you to call on all of those divine beings and allies that are helping you with your sacred voice. Call on those enlightened ancestors that use their voice as medicine, that are here helping you, that understand the fear, the trauma, and they're here as your allies. There's no judgment. And we welcome the animals, those spirit animals. There's so many animals that are connected with the voice that are here to activate our voice, that are here to help us. So I'm really feeling, you know, just like the parrot, which I've been seeing. And parrots are not, they don't like just fly around in Mexico. Okay, so in case you're wondering, so it's very, it's like feeling the parrots, the you know, the roar of the lion, just like those animals that are here to help us with our voice. I'm calling on the plant medicine, right? Those herbs that are helping to, to and in fact, what Bridget is saying, as we heal the trauma, there's going to be this call on plant medicine to soothe the wounds that were in your throat. 
Okay, all right, so I'm gonna let this go here. And we're gonna begin. So I invite you to close your eyes if you can, if you're comfortable with that. And just take a quick moment to connect with the earth. Mother earth longs for your sacred voice. She is your ally. She knows that your voice can heal her. And she knows that her medicine can heal your voice as well. So feel your roots going deep, deep into her body. And as you breathe in, maybe you bring your hands to your womb as Zoe was sharing to your sacral chakra right around your navel. Just taking a few breaths in that cauldron, that vessel. And then if you're guided, for me, so much of that is in my heart. So if you're guided to bring your hands to your heart, feeling that vessel, right, that universe of your heart that is blessing your throat. You can relax your hands as you notice in your heart a beautiful flame that starts to illuminate the space in front of you so that there is now a golden path emanating from your heart. And you're going to walk on that golden path, all of us, whether you're here live or watching the replay, you have your own golden path and you're following this golden path and you notice that you are in this beautiful sacred forest following this golden path to a grove of trees. And so step into that grove of trees and you can feel the trees have so much love so much healing for you. And as you look at these trees, there is one tree that is calling to you. One tree that calls your name. And just go ahead and walk towards that tree. Find that tree that is yours. And as you arrive, you sit right in front of that tree. Now maybe there's a cushion there, or maybe there's just leaves there. Make it as comfortable as you can. You're sitting, your back leaning against this beautiful tree. And you look around and you see all these beautiful other women and men that are surrounding and are sitting at their own tree all here so courageously willing to receive a healing for their sacred voice. And so at the center of this grove of trees, a flame appears, this beautiful orange, golden, etheric flame. It's so powerful and it's so safe. This flame is not going to hurt you. This flame is here to heal you, to activate you, to awaken you. And as you look into the flame, you start to notice the figure of this beautiful divine being, this beautiful woman. And Bridget appears in so many different ways. Perhaps you picture her like the statue I showed you but maybe she shows up differently for you and that's okay. However she shows up, she is in the flame and she walks out of the flame. And as she walks out of the flame, she walks towards you and she sits in front of you. 
And you have enough space so you don't feel crowded, but she's sitting in front of you. It's her beautiful wavy hair. That's what I see, beautiful wavy hair. These beautiful eyes, piercing, beautiful, loving eyes. And she's looking into your eyes. And as you look into her eyes, you feel her compassion for she knows the long journey you have been on in this lifetime and other lifetimes. She knows all of the trauma, the wounding, the programming that has kept your voice stifled, censored, And she says, there's nothing to be ashamed of. And now you notice that in her hand, she's holding a beautiful flame, an emerald green flame. And it's a crystalline flame, so it will not burn you. But she holds this flame in her hands and she's blessing. She's blessing this flame. She's bringing truth to this flame. She's bringing creatrix energy to this flame. She's bringing the power of silence to this flame. These aspects of your sacred voice are woven into this beautiful emerald flame. And she asks you, would you like to receive this flame of healing and activation today on this special day? She says, for this special day, I'm here to give you a gift. And so you tune into your heart because you are a sovereign being. You have free will. And you can always say, no, no, I'm not ready. Or no, I don't want to receive it. And that is okay. There is no judgment And you can say yes. And so if your answer is yes, tell her now, yes, Bridget. I lovingly receive your healing, your blessing. And so she brings this flame over the crown of your head. And she lets it go and it hovers over the crown of your head for a few moments. It's there. It's just hovering, floating over the crown of your head. And as it floats, it's very interesting. There's a center part that it's going to start to descend down through your body, but it also grows and it's growing, encompassing your whole body. Again, this is not a flame that's going to hurt you or burn you. This is a healing light. And so this emerald flame starts to go down the crown of your head and it's going to first go through all your chakras, crown, Third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral, root, all the way down to your earth star chakra, all the way down to the center of the earth. And then it's going to do this three times. It goes again. And it's just going through all of your chakras. And this time, as it touches each chakra, your chakra starts to spin. And please know if you're like, what are chakras? Or I don't know anything about chakras. That's okay. You don't need to know. Just receive it. It's spiraling through each chakra. And as your chakras spiral, they're just releasing all of this toxic energy, programming, wounds, other people's energy, other people's judgments and expectations. Let all of your chakras do that. Crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral root, all the way down to your earth star chakra. Whoosh. And as it goes down a third time, now it goes through all of your chakras and then starts traveling through your meridians, through all of your meridians, receiving this activation with this emerald green light. And again, it's okay if you're like, what are meridians? I don't know meridians. Your soul knows. So just let your meridians be filled with this emerald green light. And as that happens, now you notice at your throat, 
Now at your throat, there is this beautiful blue flame, bright blue, dark blue, whatever blue is calling to you today. And this flame is clearing and healing that ego voice. And just maybe you're guided to like open, just kind of look up or open your throat chakra as this happens, as this flame burns through those patterns of feeling you need to rescue or convince people, those patterns of judging yourself or others with your words, those patterns of maybe over speaking, right? This over speaking, like the words just, just come out and it's like, again, there's no judgment, but that is being healed, right? That ancestral burden and under speaking, perhaps there's this energy of unsafety, not feeling safe to speak. And so receive that flame in those patterns. Your soul is in charge. Your soul knows, just receive it. And then ask that question here with Bridget, with your soul, with all these divine beings as your witness, loving you, having so much compassion. Ask which aspect, which of these patterns from my ego's voice and my healing is really coming up for healing, over speaking, not speaking, judging, rescuing and convincing, people pleasing. Just ask the question, receive the answers as this flame clears this now. Remember, you're still leaning on the tree. The tree is providing groundedness. The tree roots are taking all of the toxins that are being released and sending it to the heart of the earth. What are you releasing? What is being healed? Over-speaking, under-speaking, rescuing, judging. And as that happens, you see your throat chakra, like this beautiful flower, like, you know, can you see the flower I'm wearing, something like that. It's more gorgeous, more stunning in your body, just that flower and those petals as they release, the petals are starting to grow and expand. And then now you're asking, beautiful soul, beautiful Bridget, what aspect of my soul's voice is being of my soul's sacred voice is being activated for me now for this year in 2024. Is it my voice as creatrix? Is it my voice as truth teller? Is it my voice as silent witness? Is it my voice as blesser? And please know they're all being activated. They're all being blessed, but there's one. There's one that Bridget and your soul is saying, this one, this one here is part of your medicine for the world. And so as you hear that, now you're asking, what is the truth? What is the message? Okay, Joan of Arc is showing up. Beautiful Ascended Master Joan of Arc. She's got her banner. And she's saying, you have your banner Dear one, you have your banner. And so ask your soul, beautiful soul, what is the message written on my banner? What is the truth, the message that I am the messenger for? So receive that, receive that in your heart. Receive that in your throat. We ask your beautiful soul, higher self, to integrate this activation across all four levels of your being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, across all dimensions of time. We call on the plant medicine to bring healing and soothing energy to your throat. 
for there was a lot released. And what I'm hearing is some of you, some of us may be guided to use plants, drink a special tea, put some essential oils over your throat area, like flowers or call on the plant medicine to, to soothe your throat as you integrate this healing and activation. Bridget ends with a final blessing of protection and love for you and your journey and your medicine as she walks back into her beautiful flame. Feel the tree that you're leaning on, sending you beautiful earth, medicine, and energy and messages. Listen, what does the tree want to tell you? And please don't panic if you're like, oh, I can't hear anything right now. That's okay. The messages are landing in your heart and they will become clear at just the right time. Feel the roots of the tree activating your own beautiful roots so that you're very grounded as you stand up from this tree grove we were in. Feel everybody's gratitude for you. You thank all the divine beings that are here as you walk back to that golden path where we all began. Follow that golden path back to your heart. Come back into your heart. Come back into your body. Take deep cleansing breaths, deep cleansing breaths, deep cleansing breaths. I'm going to ask your guardian angels to do any final ceilings and clearings for your everyday activities. When you feel ready, gently opening your eyes, taking some cleansing breaths, perhaps drinking some water. If there's anything you need to write down that you weren't able to, take a moment to do that. And if there's anything you want to share in the chat i know sometimes it's hard after this right you're just kind of like still integrating but if there's anything that you're guided to share in the chat about what came to you for me it's always so moving just to feel how these divine meet like how much understanding they have for our human journey Right? It's never like, come on, you need to be further ahead or why, you know, they're just so much understanding, so much love and patience and yeah, it's like all the impatience just comes from us basically, right? From ourselves. Mm. And so um, Zoe, I want to just kind of check in with you and See if there's anything you'd like to share as we get come to our closing. Thank you. I feel a bit like that, like, oh, that's so yeah. nice. <laughs> so um it felt just so gorgeous. I love when you lead a meditation. It's mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. And I really felt actually I actually was drawn to a pain in my throat came up first. So me too. Very activating. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was like it was showing me, you know, this um pain that was there that I wasn't aware of and I really love the scene that you created it felt so um so atmospheric and, and where and and Bridgety it's the only way I can say it so but then as the third time went through that really felt very clearing um and then at the I was just invited and and maybe for for us all to continue you know, I love that we were letting go and then that we were bringing in and activating those whichever aspect. I got a clear message for myself what that was, but then I was also invited to share as well that we can take it an, another step home and 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 write a mantra for ourselves, like, um, you know, with, with this power that we have with our voice, with this letting go and this healing that we've done to create a mantra that we can speak 
to ourselves like you know that is so powerful I now use my voice to create this I now use my voice to heal this I now use my voice to bless this and and just to continue this practice of what we've been working on and create that ourselves obviously because it's so personal Mm, I love that Zoe and um when you said that I so when Joan of Arc came in I saw both she was holding the banner right it's like okay this is a message here but then she also had a banner that was our scarf like it turned into a scarf around our neck and I was kind of like but when you were talking about the mantra that's what I saw it's like writing our mantra in this scarf which you don't literally need to do that although you might and like mm-hmm. seeing it like around our neck as it heals because I felt a lot of pain in my neck too and I still kind of feel it like there's this like just like there was like release happening. So there's something about even that mantra, those words like healing, continue to heal our throat, right? And 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 yeah, thanks for, because when I'm leading the meditation, often right after I kind of forget and I forgot that, yeah, we did the three flames, right? It was like, she did it three times. It was really such a like deep, like, yes, that emerald green light clearing and healing. It was so thorough and, And yes, as you said, and for everybody here, not just what Zoe shared, but you will get your own uh, expansion on this, right? Like you will get more messages of like, oh, I want to do this. You know, maybe I'm guided to write a mantra on my water. And every time I drink the water, I'm drinking that mantra, right? Or you'll find other ways. So I'm going to read what some of people are saying. The gift of my voice is here to translate in French all Mother Mary's blessings now and forever. Oh, Valerie, thank you so much. That is so beautiful. Yes. Wow. So mm. you're a spokesperson for Mother Mary. Beautiful. And your land of France. So beautiful. Which, you know, Mother Mary has such a connection with France. I mean, she's connected with everywhere, but has <laughs> such a connection with France. Deborah, we sat at the foot of a small waterfall and Bridget had me look into the pool of water there. It filled with stars of all colors. Oh, I was asked if I would be a truth speaker about the wisdom and the movement of the stars, which is beautifully aligned for me as an astrological interpreter. I love that, Deborah. That is so beautiful. And as soon as you said stars, I thought of Our Lady of Guadalupe and her cloak of stars as well, which I really feel like Bridget and Guadalupe are like buddies. I really do feel that. And it's just like that, that feels so divine. Thank you for sharing that, Deborah. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody else here, you know, you have your own experiences and, you know, again, feel free to share. I just, as we come to closing, a couple of things that I want to share. One, you will receive. Oh, good, Devra. You love Our Lady of Guadalupe. Well, yep, she's totally guiding you as in your astrology, astrology endeavors for sure. Um, this will be, I will be sending the replay to everyone. So you will have it. Feel free to share it with anyone. You know, this was a free offering. So unlike when I do the paid offerings, that it, obviously it's only for people who register this when you get it. If you're like, oh my gosh, I think this person would benefit, you know, feel free to send it. I will also post it on my YouTube channel. Zoe, I think maybe you'll be able to do that in your YouTube channel as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, one thing we didn't get a chance to talk to, you might've known already, but Zoe has this amazing, beautiful I call it a goddessy priestessy business of, you know, wool, 100% Irish wool luxury blankets. And she so generously will be offering a coupon code. And I will send that in the email with the replay. And you can look at her website. There's so many beautiful things. It's woven in with the medicine of Ireland, with the medicine of Bridget and all of these Celtic divine beings that are here to help us. And also there, I offer a free breakthrough consultation if you would like to receive support, like if you if you want to receive clarity on like, okay, I know I have my soul's medicine to share. And I also have these blocks, this resistance. I need help figuring out what that is and sign up for that. I just, I think I have, I still have some slots left in February. Yes, because February just opened. And if you look at the calendar and none of the times work for you, feel free to email me. And I might, you know, something might open up. And last thing, I want to share is Mother Mary, speaking of Mother Mary, like um, this month's transmission is going to be all about, you know, it's Valentine's Day month. And she really wanted to talk about our heart, our heart as this, you know, leadership vessel of our heart. So that's going to be the Mother Mary transmission. It's usually $33, but it's a special Valentine's 
rate of $21. So I'll send all those links. I know it's a lot to offer to give you right at the end, but I'll send all of that in the email. And I want to read some of these here. Actually, I'm also going to put, um, I want to, I know somebody just wrote something and I also want to, I know Zoe, you have little ones. Okay. That's, there's a link to my calendar. If you want to look about the breakthrough session, Michelle, I was feeling this heaviness and pain. I could feel the tremble in my whole body. It was an intense release for me. I went into a silent scream with my mouth open wide and clenching my fist, then felt this power in my throat unleashing out at the same time, receiving and releasing all at once. Michelle, thank you so much for sharing that. That is so powerful. And wow, you know, it's like, yeah, that, that ferocity. I remember years ago, I was guided to go into a forest and just scream, like not a silent scream, like literally scream. And I remember my husband and I was like, you have to find me somewhere in the forest where I'm not going to like terrify people. And they're going to think like, what is going on? And so we were in North Carolina and he drove around. We went to the Smoky Mountains, finally found a spot that was like, okay, I think you can do it here. And I was like, okay, walk away. I need to do this by myself. But it was that. And I, and it was like this, it was like all the silent screams came in one and I, scream so loud my husband um, like he he was like I had no idea like he knew I was gonna do it so I thought he was but he was like he was so stunned and started he was just like oh my gosh like it was so primal I'm sure somebody must have heard it there and it was so healing so thank you Michelle for sharing that whether you I'm not saying you need to go do the scream this might have been enough but it's like yeah that we have so much heaviness and pain around our voice we really do. And, and, um, you know, I, one thing I didn't share is I'm starting a Sophia circle journey on the 13th. And I don't know what it is, Michelle, about what you wrote, but that is such a powerful, it's a one-year journey. We meet once a month. So if you're a very busy person and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do it, you can do it once a month. And it's really this, this, experience of connecting with your higher self, with the ascended masters, with your higher self to help you, whether it's with your voice, with your power, with remembering that you're a sovereign divine being. I'll send that as well because there's two spots left. And, you know, maybe one of you, I know actually two of you that are on here are part of the signed up for the Sophia Circle journey, but there was something about, I think I just felt, Michelle, when you shared that, I just felt the ascended masters specifically those divine feminine masters just so with you when you were doing that like I just feel like they were like yes Michelle yes and everybody else who's who's resonates with what you just wrote so thank you so much yeah. thank you I feel like there was also a collective release it's like yes. we're also collectively we share so much of the pain with our voice that that was like a collective healing yes and that's probably what we're feeling this you know like stretch and expansion in our throat and like right that you know some of that that pain that we can feel. So I want to, um, I will stay and pull some cards, but Zoe, I know you have your little ones. Are you okay? Or do you need to go? Whatever it is, is fine. I'm just very aware because I know we're already 18 minutes past. Yes, I have to go in in, in a minute. Actually, I have a little Great. one. <laughs> yes, please. With. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Sophia says, I received a mantra for my voice when I was lying down and then I was sitting up to write it. It was gone. Oh, well, Sophia, oh. trust the mantra is in your heart. It is there and it is where it needs to be. If your soul decides you also need to hear it, to know it, your soul will give it to you. But your soul might just be like, you know what? It's better that's just in your heart because you're going to receive it that way more. So trust, because that has happened to me so many times where I'm like, oh my gosh, I received this like really powerful message and I went to write it and now I can't write it. But then I realized my soul said like, because you don't need to write it. It's woven inside of you. So I'm just going to pull three cards for the group and then we are done. And, and Zoe, at any time, if you need to leave, just feel free to leave or bring your little one on. That is <laughs> I, fine. <laughs> okay. I really want to see right. the, I really want to see the three cards and then I'll Okay. Leave. So the card, whoa. We're, okay. So I'm going to pull from the priestess oracle, priestess of the light, because we're all priestesses, priestesses, sacred men and women. This new deck that I purchased recently, magical spirit oracle, which I love. And then the other one doesn't have a book. It's the surrender deck. I have a lot of oracle decks, as you, many of you know. And I always pray and tune in, okay, which deck is the one that needs to be used for today? Hello, Sophia. Thank you for being here. We have our little, our little joiner here. She's such a powerful priestess too. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start with the priestess card. This is for everyone, whether you're here live or watching the replay. 
And we're asking Bridget, we're asking your beautiful higher self and soul for this message. Sp this is specifically about your sacred voice. So the question that's coming forward is like, what, like, how are you, what part of your priestess medicine is sharing this aspect of your sacred voice? So it's like, so when you see the card, it's like, oh, this is a way that I'm meant to share my sacred voice. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Number 10, sacred breath and sound, life force, communication. Okay, look at this card. Look at this. This beautiful priestess has a dolphin coming out of her hand. Like what? Think about dolphins. They're like joy, innocence, playfulness. They like jump through the waves. So there's something about that. And it's gonna mean something specifically to each of you. Sacred breath and sound life force communication so you this you'll get the replay so if you don't have this deck you can take a picture you know of the card when you have the replay and just look at it and see what does that mean to you you know and of course we know dolphins are and sound are so connected but that's so beautiful all right so we're going to put this one down then i'm going to do the surrender card Oh, the animals are really with us today. This, I mean, neither of these are animal decks, but we have two gorgeous animals here. Surrender to receiving support and love. And this is the mantra. Listen, allow the love and support of others in rather than trying to handle everything yourself. This can take the pressure off and simultaneously nurture you. And what I'm hearing Bridget say too is it's not just receiving help from people definitely do that but receive help from the masters from the divine beings they're like we're here to help you and look at the gorgeous polar bears like oh my gosh i love that and look up polar bear medicine look up polar bear spirit animals see what is that it's very different than grizzly bear so like that is so powerful they're so like with their mouths open aren't they i know yes they're like ah, they're uh -huh. using their voice so we've got <laughs> so far dolphin and these beautiful bears, right? And then we're going to do the last card and then we shall be done. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love it. Okay, this is like my newest deck. So I literally have not seen most of these or read these, but this says, it's time to come home. Goddess of the sea, abundance, purification, ego. So to me, it's like purifying the ego. Look at this image. I'm going to show it to you. Look at this woman. Look at, I don't know if you see, there's this little boat and this person going in, coming home to her heart. I feel like this is like your soul, right? Our soul. And I love that she has blue hair because that's the color of the throat chakra and those blue eyeshadow. So mm. This is so gorgeous and beautiful. Wow. Just like really you tune in everyone and see what it means to you. Like really let it speak to you and, and speak to you all of this as a sentence, right? It's like, it's all like a sentence together, right? And yeah, I'm so touched by that. Like I, I feel both like we can see ourselves as this person and we can see ourselves as the person on the boat, right? Going through the waves, like I'm coming home. I'm coming home, beautiful soul. Like take me in. And she's like, I've got you because this is her hand. She's like, I've got you. I'm bringing you in. So that is so gorgeous. That is so beautiful. <laughs> that is so beautiful. All right, my dears, thank you so much. I will send the replay within 48 hours. It's such a joy to be here with all of you. Thank you, Zoe, so much for joining us from Ireland and being our special guest. Thank you, Sophia, for joining us here at the end. <laughs> and thank you, all of you, whether you're here live or watching the replay. Thank you for, for being so courageous and for sharing your medicine with us and your healing with us. I know we all, all benefited from this together. Thank you, oh, Michelle. Thank you, Elisa. And thank you, your beautiful community. I love everybody. They're so yeah. gorgeous and supportive. They're awesome. so amazing. All right. Bye, everyone. Mwah. See you all. Bye.